Hello and welcome to Social Media Weekly, episode 20th, October 2021. Social Media Weekly is brought to you by Virtual Palace Marketing, rehumanizing your marketing experience. My name is Sean. And I'm Jay. And for the first time in two years, one year one plus year. also, we're back in the office. Um, so I didn't bother to do those fancy green screen stuff because I think everyone should know how my office, our office actually looks like. It's just authentic. a normal. This is the authentic. Just a normal office. Nothing fancy. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can do this on a weekly basis now that we can be back in office. Yeah. Feels good. Feels good to be back. Yep. So uh, this is Jay's first time back in office as well, right? Yep. Mm. First time actually seeing you. Yeah, in person. <laughs> in person. <laughs> anyway, so this is going to be a very special edition. Every year what we do is we do a social media predictions uh, at the end of every year to kind of like gauge where we will go next year and what to expect and things like that. Um, so this episode will be fully on that one. Uh, most of what will happen in 2022 have already been somewhat discussed in our past episodes because if you pick up on some of the things that these companies are planning to do, you will know that, okay, these guys are doing this, these guys are doing that, so the trend is going this way, the trend is going that way. Yep. But if you're more of a give me a TL, TLDR version because you know, you're too lazy to watch the whole thing, this is it. All right, so starting off with that, Shopping is coming to social. Right now, we have seen some semblance of shopping on Facebook and Instagram, but nothing as serious that they are about to bring in 2022. Next year, Facebook, Instagram, Snap, and Twitter will integrate, will want to integrate payments into their platforms. Eventually, we will not need to exit the app and into a Shopify site to buy something. We would also likely be using one of their in-house currencies to make a purchase. Hmm, I mean like right now, by the looks of it, we even have like Facebook Marketplace and also Instagram have their own yes. place to shop. Um, but the problem is, it always is, it goes down to the part where you make the payment. Yeah, true. And the payment has to either be made by uh, chat in WhatsApp and then do payment somewhere else. Correct. So what these companies want to do is they want the payment to be done in the app itself. Mm. They don't have to press a button to go to a Shopify site or a WordPress site or some other site. It all can be done inside. But Facebook also has a greater plan, which is that even the payment can the payment can even be done with their own currency. Facebook tokens? Oh, yes. I think it's called Libra. Oh, okay. I used to I used to joke with um, with the past co-host that it could be called face pay <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, he, has a, he has a better catch to it I know right Libra, I know right? you would like it more it's a bit more fun you know less um, yeah but in any case this is what this is what's the plan for um, all the companies Facebook Instagram snap and Twitter as well so they're putting they're integrating payments into their platform because shopping is a big thing and shopping social shopping is a big thing as well thanks okay. to COVID uh, second, getting aggressive on AR, AR being augmented reality. If COVID has taught us anything, it is that we can buy most of what we need without trying the products first. For what we can't, social platforms like Facebook and Snap are working hard to fill that void. AR is being used mostly for fun things these days. But imagine if you can share uh, hair color looks on us before we go for that hair treatment. It'd be cool, right? I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing like, I've always wanted to try this color, but I don't know if it works on me. Yep. And if I actually go try it, it may be too late because you're stuck with the color. Correct. I mean, like, even for this, if you think about it, it's cost saving. You don't have to try an error. You already would know how you would look like. Exactly. It, you know? So I remember, I think it was last year or two years ago. I think it was last year. Um, there was this thing trending on Instagram where people can actually try the hair color. And a lot of people actually eventually uh, went for the hair color that they like the most actually somewhere else. So this, this hair color AR thing on Instagram was not made by a company. It was just made by some people who wanted to try different colors on their hair. It became viral. Imagine if a company actually made this AR like by Swatchkov or something like that, right? And you, you can only get the exact color if you use their product. Oh. Imagine that. That would be quite... It, it, it's what it's supposed to be but brands are not hopping onto it. They haven't been doing it, but hopefully 2022 will be the year that, that they are doing out. that. Like yep. a lot of new things coming in, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is just number two. Exactly. <laughs> and imagine if, if, um, if girls can try out lipstick color on them 
before they actually go and um, buy something. Yeah. Or they, they don't have to go into a shop to buy it. They can try it virtually. They say, okay, I think this looks good on my skin color, on my face. I want this color. So I just buy it straight from the online it shop. It would be easier as well though, yeah. instead of like, you know, because it, when you think about like lipstick and stuff like that, and we are living in a day whereby, you know, with COVID, you don't want to simply take lipstick, you know, those th- kind of testers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You right? know, it's yeah. dangerous. So, um, pushing forward for this, I feel it's a bit more feasible mm. and a bit more safer for the general public as well. Yep. And a pair of shoes as well. Sometimes, I feel that, this is what I, this is what I find. When I see a pair of shoes, it's like, hey, this pair of shoes look good. But then when I wear it, it's like, it nope, doesn't look good on not you. Not on me. <laughs> <laughs> not on me. So imagine if you have like an AR thing, right? You put your, uh, let's say you, you, you put your camera against, uh, let's say a, a mirror or something. A like mirror that. or something. And then the AR shoe actually sticks to your legs. And you walk around, you see it on all 360 degrees. Cool. You think, okay, this works on me. I think I want this pair of shoes. Then I start looking for the size. That would actually be good as well, though. Yeah. So, um, AR commerce is a big thing, and many are predicting it is getting matured enough for commercial adoption. Uh, Social media will also be moving from your mobile device to AR headsets. Like, uh, now we need to open up our phone to actually see stuff on Facebook. Yep. Imagine if you have a pair of glasses and everything just pops out. Like what Facebook heads up is display, working on. Like what Facebook is working on. Um, and not only Facebook, Apple and Snap are also working on yep. similar products as well. So this is what 2022 looks out to be in terms of AR. And it, to me, it's actually quite interesting. It's a step forward for humanity, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, something new. All right, next. Building, a, building the metaverse. Facebook just announced it is hiring about 10, uh, around 10,000 new people to build their virtual reality social world. 2022 may not see the metaverse being launched to the public, but we will definitely see some great strides. Coupled, oh, coupled with the low latency 5G connectivity, our dreams are finally coming true. Yep. I think the biggest problem with the metaverse or metaverse being the virtual reality world that, that we are trying to build, it's that it's the latency, right? When you move your hand, then it actually, there's the, the delay yes. with your hand moving and your mm. brain getting it and someone else on the other side receiving that command kind of thing. Yep. So 5G will hope to, to break this barrier because 5G is like, they're supposed to be like at least 10 times faster and, and it goes down to like almost zero latency. Latency being, meaning the delay between you doing something and the server receiving your action. So it's near zero. So yeah. It is the dawn of virtual reality, like the oasis and Ready Seems Player like One. very much like we'll be talking through a window, but in two different countries. Or there is a virtual world that we all get into and we are the characters that we all want to be. Oh, and, that and would be fun. That, <laughs> yeah. And the real us is actually lying somewhere at home and, you know, nourished by, yeah. by, by, by IV solutions <laughs> because we don't need to eat anything. We don't need to cut our hair. We don't need to look good. All we need to do is just to stay alive. Correct. Because every beautiful part of us will have will happen in the virtual reality. I mean, like you can give an example, like a movie Wall E. Remember how those people yeah. be on the chairs yes, and yeah. like they had like a drink, which is their food. Everything yes. is just there, and like until they just remove that, then they realize reality. But I feel that well, most likely we'll be stepping into this, but more. I wouldn't say like Wall E, mm-hmm. but a bit more futuristic, like, I feel. Yeah, but I'm telling you, if, if, if you don't control what's happening, right, this is what's, this is... Bound to happen. Bound to happen, <laughs> yeah. Next up is the changes in re- algorithms. Facebook files hasn't been fun for Facebook. So for those who don't know what Facebook files is, it is the release of the most controversial files um, that Facebook has uh, encountered in their history in which um, ex-employees of Facebook s- have been uh, saying claiming and proving, being able to prove that when Facebook is faced by the fact that either they need to focus on profits or the welfare of the users, they always focus on profits first at the expense of the welfare of the users. So this is a very big case for Facebook now. They're being sued left, right, center. Um, 2022 will be the year social media platforms 
understand the responsibilities they have for their users. We have talked about this as well. Yep. If companies can be amoral and continue to operate or they need to take an ethical stand on where is the line, where not to draw the line for the, pur for the purpose of profits, um, then instead of changing the algorithms back and forth, this would perhaps be the year where they let us choose which algorithm format to use uh, for our own feeds. For example, t imagine this, right? Instead of Facebook telling us what is the best algorithm for us, Facebook has an option for four types of algorithms. You have the chronological, which means yep. you see the new one, newer ones first. You have the friends first, which means um, you focus on all your friends and all the pages and everything gets, gets um, sidelined, yep. right? Only after you exhaust all your friends' content and then only you go to um, all the pages and the other people who are acquaintances and things like that. Then the third one will be trending first. It's the one where Facebook actually wants us to see right now, which is all the trending stuff. What Facebook thinks that um, we should see based on our behavior, what we have seen. Hmm. That kind of stuff. Uh, no, three actually, not four. So that will also be the best way to keep their own hands clean from lawsuits and bad press because if someone gets like a, a problem with the algorithm, Facebook can always say, you are you choosing chose. the wrong option. Exactly. Right? It's not my problem. I've gave you the options. It's your choice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, that's the issue. But I do, I do think that um, an algorithm transparency and change may think, be coming. Yeah, like even for me, like right now, I would prefer to see what's trending first instead of um, under my friends list. Mm. Um, instead of seeing like pictures, because some days I have about like 4,000 friends on Facebook. So you tend to see unnecessary pictures. Yep. And to be honest, like I just would like to see what's going on right now. Whether it's friends see. or not, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, I would prefer that like giving an option for your algorithm would be a better solution, I feel, yep. for this well, fair enough. For me, I would prefer friends first because I like to get my trending uh, content from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But when I'm in social media, I prefer to have a friends first um, approach. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Facebook, two people, already two different algorithm um, exactly. uh, preferences. Check it out. Okay. Growth of audio. In this, we are talking mostly about social formats like, uh, like Clubhouse, Facebook Rooms, Twitter Spaces, and the likes. But we also hope it will expand to podcasts as well, which means people will finally be able to listen to our show. Hopefully. I'm praying for it. But I think, <laughs> I, I believe that there is people watching it. Lah. There's not as much right yeah, now. Not as many. Would more, the merrier, you know? Of course. The key contributor to the growth of audio consumption is that we can multitask while at it. Unlike videos, our eyes can be committed to something else like driving or jogging. COVID hasn't been good for audio content, but we hope 2022 will see it growing again. Yeah, I think a lot of parts of the audio that they are talking about is actually Clubhouse, Facebook yeah. Rooms and Twitter Spaces because, um, well, we all know that it is doing very well. All right. Although I think the growth has somewhat plateaued quite a bit. Yep. It's not exploding as it used to be. But... Uh, we do know that companies like Spotify, Spotify yep. has um, Green Room. has what is it called? Has invested a lot on podcasts. Yep. So we hope that that will bring some reach to our podcast as well. You know. Do check us out. We are we are we are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> We're not too bad. Number six is subscriptions. Twenty twenty two will be the year Twitter see if subscriptions tier will sell. If it does, perhaps other social media platforms can emulate that model and give users an option of securing their data, their personal data for a little bit of money. Everyone has been up in arms about their personal data when using these free products. Let's see if they're willing to pay money for their privacy instead. So this is a big issue, right? Yep. I think there are only two social media platforms that have a free tier and paid tier. Uh, well, one right now, which is YouTube. Yep. And YouTube shows ads. Correct. And their paid tier is they don't have ads. But in their paid tier, they are still collecting personal data. Right? If Twitter says, okay, in this, in this paid tier, Twitter Blue, uh, for three dollars a month, three US dollars a month, we will also not collect your your data at all. There will be no ads, no data collection, nothing. You will have the pure Twitter experience. And if enough people move in and get the Twitter Blue experience because they want to protect their, their private data from unnecessary usage, 
then this becomes kind of like a, a proven, uh, proven fact that people are willing to pay for, uh, for a service that does not protect your data. Yep. But then the next question is, if every single social media platform charges you $3 to not collect your data, how many can you pay when you All reach right. a point that you will say, okay, you know what? Enough is enough. Take my data. I don't want to pay money anymore. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, even for me, I predicted this quite some time back because, um, I mean, like even previously, there's been issues about privacy-wise and I kind of suspected that in the far future, paying for privacy would be a thing. Mm. And I can see a few steps are going forward right now at this point. <laughs> yeah, but for me, I think it's okay if there's like a one price for all. Exactly. But if you have to pay like a uh, 100, 200, 300 ringgit just to protect our privacy, I mean, come on, it's not, I'm not worth that much. Yep. Right, so just take my private data, show me some ads that matter to me. Correct. So, <laughs> I mean, like, a few seconds of ads, maybe, you know, no, I mean, instead of paying extra, you see ads, maybe you see some things that you like. And you exactly, might pursue, that's the thing. You, know? you see, I would rather have accurate ads that I know I want it than have ads on things that has nothing to do with me. You see? There you go. And it matters. I mean, and the way they, they know what you want is by collecting your data. So that's just a fact of it. That, that's the thing. There's pros and cons for both sides yeah. of it. It depends on which, which one you mm. would favor. To but what I don't like is them using my data to control what I agree on and not agree on. Correct. That is what I don't want. Next, scanning your world. Snapchat started implementing scanning capabilities with their camera and Apple just rolled out a bunch of abilities with their phone cameras too. 2022 will see more companies adding these abilities to their cameras, allowing us to properly interact with our surroundings. I think we spoke about this um, in, uh, I think, a couple of episodes ago about mm. Snapchat and like how, like taking a snap and like you get to see things moving around yep. and stuff like that. Those... I'm actually really looking forward for that. So, right, uh, continuing, we have been scanning QR codes with our cameras, a function less than 30% of the world are familiar with just two years ago. Now, we can cast augmented realities onto ourselves and our surroundings, convert words to image to, to text, and even recognize the products and tell us where to buy them. 2022 will be the year these features come becomes everywhere to all users out there. I mean, like, think about it right now. We want to go to the shop. You need to scan your QR code. Yep. Only then you can enter. Yep. You know, QR code has been, it is embedded to all of us at this point. Anywhere yep. you want to do, anything you want to do, you still need to You want to order code. food, also you still need to get a QR code. Exactly. So you need to turn on your camera for everything. So... <laughs> what, three years ago, camera was just for photo taking, yep. right? And a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I do understand that Android has had some of the functions that um, Apple just introduced on iOS this year, in iOS 15. Uh, but it's only this year or, or this past two years that we can actually, we actually understand now the full capacity and capability of the cameras exactly. on our phones. Rather than just taking picture, we can scan so many things in our environment and be able to identify so many things in our environment. So, I think 2022 will be, we'll, we'll see more of that. An interesting year. And moreover, right now, since things are recovering as well, a lot of things are going to come up, I guess. Exactly. Next up, number eight, remote events and recruitment. LinkedIn is preparing for a post-COVID world where some would be working in a hybrid environment. So, they have been upgrading, they have been upgrading their app to better serve virtual recruitments and virtual events. It's a bit of a gamble on their part, seeing as many companies have already asked for employees to return to the office. But if they can just capture a usage of around 30% of the world uh, who are working remotely long term, this could work very well for LinkedIn. So we have talked about it. LinkedIn just yep. introduced um, an improved version of video calling yep. on their platform. And LinkedIn also introduced uh, virtual events where they can make money from selling tickets. All right. And yeah, they are banking on more remote working and hybrid working environment in the future. I guess I guess it was a wake-up call for LinkedIn, especially mm -hmm. adapting to the COVID situation. Yeah. Yep. yeah, It's a good approach. It's a very good approach. It is, to me, um, I mean, it's nice, but I feel that they could have gotten into it earlier. Yep. 
right? I, 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 mean, I agree it, with you. This thing happened for two years and it took them, you know, two full years to start to figure this out. It could have been faster and they could have ride the wave of COVID rather than be at the tail end of it. Actually, yeah, I think, yeah, I do agree with you. They could have started faster, but um, I mean, like, at least it's, it's better late than ever, to be honest. Yeah, true, true. And it's always good news for LinkedIn uh, to be able to do more than what they have already done. Yep. Um, LinkedIn is trying to be a lot more than just a professional um, social media platform. Yep. Next, Instagram's evolution. There have been talks that Instagram may be retiring their posts in favor of stories and reels soon. Their own metrics have shown that posts are consistently losing reach and engagement. 2022 might be the year users are allowed to control which format they see first when loading up the app. And if the least choose posts, that may end up being placed, placed in the back of the shelf. Like, you know, seeing this itself, it, it kind of break, uh, it kind of break my heart a bit because like Instagram has, came has more of a picture platform yep. instead of um, stories yep. and reels because story like that reels are for TikTok essentially. Yeah. And I really hope they stick into picture platform, but I like this because you get to choose what you want to see. Yes. You know the flexibility of you getting to choose what you want to view. That is the beauty part about it and. I'm looking forward for this, like if they can roll out. I mean, I would like to see posts as well as reels, not as much as stories, because yeah. reels usually, like for me, I'm an artist. So when I see individuals, like when they make their art, I like to see how they make their art, mm. the styles that they use, you know, how they, how they grasp it, you know? Mm. So I, re- I actually really like this. What, what, what about you? So imagine this, right? Imagine, because right now when you go into Instagram uh, app, the first thing you see is always post. Yep. Then you gotta tap a button to see stories. You gotta tap another different button to see reels. Correct. Imagine if you have the ability to choose which is the default screen. If you want reels first, whenever you launch Instagram, you get to see reels first. And then you tap a button, you get to see post. Tap another button, you get to see stories. And if you're a stories person, you tap a button, you, you launch it and you immediately see stories. Yep. Everything is very like story centric. So in these three versions, the layout of Instagram is different. Correct. And I like that because I'm a stories person. I'm not so much of a reels person. Uh, post as well, but less post now. So I prefer to see posts first. And I do, do know people who prefer reels. So they want to see reels first. And some people prefer posts. They see posts first. So the, the ability to change this, instead of just deciding what the majority people want and then give it to them. Correct. The ability for us to choose, I think will help us help Instagram as well. I like the... Like, it's more customizable yeah. to your own needs, you know? Yeah. And then anytime you can go to the setting, you can change it to something else. Correct. It's all yeah. fine. Um, yeah. The final one, number 10, live streaming. Live streaming has been a big thing for a while in China and its neighbors, but in the past few years have also gained traction in other parts of the world. It's proven to be an effective way to perform auctions and sales. Have you bought something from a live auction before in the COVID time? Um, no. Okay. I got have a friend you? who loves to buy fish. Oh, okay. from live auctions and he says that because he gets this cheaper stuff he gets to actually see the fish and I guess not really see the fish but you know see the fish <laughs> uh, but I don't like it because I have to be there and commit to the entire live event to be able to know what's going on yep. uh, I, I want to be able to go into at, at my own comfort on demand whenever I feel comfortable whenever I have time I sit down there, I click a few buttons and I buy whatever I want and I hope that they will give me the best product that they have but there are people who love to shop live streaming. Sit down there, mm-hmm. look at the you know, auction kind of stuff, negotiate with them live, like text them, say, oh, you know, give it to me like, at uh, 20%, like, I get another one. Hmm. Then, then that person, okay, 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 I'll give it to you. You know, Seems that kind of like stuff. very like bidding much. Yes. Yeah. So it's, they, they love these things and it's very fun for them. Uh, so there is a huge market for this. And there are many predictions that live streaming will continue to rise in 2022. Um, so, yeah. I mean, like, from what have you been saying, it makes sense because I feel like live streaming, it's on the go, you know, Uh, and moreover, it's interactive because immediately when you text that individual and you know this person is there and you know for a fact he's going to bargain with you on the spot itself just to make a buck. Um, So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that um, 2022 live streaming will be another big thing as well. 
mm-hmm. I'm looking forward for 2022. There's so much things happening for 2022. Right. So if you are a social media brand, if you're a company that is planning digital marketing, so we hope that these 10, um, these 10 predictions can actually set you in the right direction in some way. And if you still are not very clear, you can always ring us up, talk to us, email us, and we'll talk. With that, Social Media Weekly podcast is available on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Our full video is available on YouTube, and we post bits and clips on Instagram and Facebook. If you like Social Media Weekly, it would really help if you could rate and review it on a podcast feeder of your choice and on YouTube so more can discover it. It doesn't cost you anything to rate and review, just click a button, give it five stars if you're happy. If not, you know, give us like not a five star and tell us how we can improve on it. Social Media Weekly is on the lookout for regular co-hosts to help help us bring some depth to the show. If you're interested, simply drop me an email at sean, that is S-H-A-W-N, at virtualpeddlers.com. This is Social Media Weekly, episode 20th, October 2021. My name is Sean. And I'm Jay, and I bid you an adieu. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.